So, um, so the title of the message today is Be a Doer of Love. Be a Doer of Love. And we're going to talk about today, what is love? How do you define love? How do you love and make it work in your life? Because I can tell you, love people, but if I don't give you some practical applications of how you can actually take that and then make it work in your life, I'm doing you a disservice to just say, go love people. Have a good day. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't give you any tools to go with. So <clears throat> we're going to talk about that a little bit and uh, about how we can better love others. It's going to be some of the points for today. So the first one I'm going to read myself, um, and then when we get into the message, we'll, we'll take turns reading the words to get your Bibles ready so that you can help me out as far as us reading, reading together and sharing together. So, but I'm going to start off in 1 Corinthians 13. I'm going to be reading this from the Message Bible. And so, um, as I was looking at different translations, I know I read a lot out of the King James and the New King James with Amplified. Those are my three that I love to read out of. <clears throat> but today, for this particular message right here, or this particular uh, scripture, I'm going to read it out of the Message Bible because um, I kind of like the way it brought it out. Okay? So in 1 Corinthians 13, starting at verse 1, it says, If I speak with human eloquence, and angelic and angelically but do but don't love I am nothing but a creaking the creaking of a rusty gate if I speak God's word with power reveal all his mysteries and making everything plain as day and if I have a faith to say to this mountain jump and it jumps but I don't love I am nothing so whether I move mountains, whether I heal, it doesn't matter what I do. If I do it, what I'm saying, if I do that without love, then it actually accomplishes nothing. Verse 3, if I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I've gotten nowhere. So no matter what I say, what I believe, what I do, I'm bankrupt without love. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love does not want what it does not have. Love is not proud or arrogant. It does not have a swelled head. It does not force itself on others. It's always, it isn't always me first. Doesn't fly off the handle. Doesn't keep a score of the sins of others. Doesn't revel when others grovel. Takes pleasure in the, in the truth. Puts up with anything. Trust God always and always looks for the best and never looks back. It never looks back. I love that. Mm -hmm. But it keeps on going to the end. So, that's a little description of what is love. First Corinthians tells us all about that in chapter 13. Next, we're going to be going to Luke 6 and 27. And while you're turning there, once again, I had a message prepared. <laughs> and then last night, as I was listening to the scripture, <clears throat> I got into Luke 6, and all of a sudden the Lord said, this is what I want you to minister. And I was like, okay. So I got up this morning and started preparing 
what the Lord had put on my heart last night. So in Luke 6, verse 27, who would like to read 27, 28, and 29? Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Say it loud so everybody can hear. So. Verse 27. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who abuse you. To one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Okay. So, if you look at the first part of verse 27, it says, I'm reading out the Amplified. It says, you who hear. Disqualification. You who hear. In other words, we talked about the seed, the, the, the sower and the seed, you know, and we talked about the heart, and we talked about receiving the seed. And so in here, you know, Jesus said, well, not in this particular verse, but Jesus said in other passages, those who have ears to hear will hear. And so in this, he said, right here, starting out, just before this, he was talking about the Beatitudes and things like that. And then he gets into this part here. <clears throat> and so he's qualified. It says, those of you that have ears to hear, pay attention. And then what's the next word? Love. Love your enemies. And when he says love your enemies in the Amplified, right after it says love your enemies, he says make it a practice to do. So love your enemies. Practice loving your enemies. Okay? Do good to those that hate you. Bless those who curse or who um, curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. And when somebody strikes your cheek, offer the other one. In the Amplified, it says, after that, it says, simply ignore insignificant insults or losses and do not bother to retaliate. Maintain your dignity. Okay? So now this is talking about the physical, turning the other cheek. Because it, right in here, he's talking about what? Loving your enemies, love those that curse you. And then he goes in, turning the other cheek. Why? Don't take insults. Ignore the insults. Ignore the persecution. Okay? I'm going to read this next one because I'm going to tie in the last part of 29 into verse 30. It says, Whoever takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from him either. Give to everyone who asks of you. And whoever takes away what is yours, don't demand it back. Now, I'm going kind of slow in here because there's a lot to digest. And not to just read over really quickly, but there's a lot that we need to digest, including myself, in what Jesus is putting across right here. Okay? Basically saying, if someone takes from you or steals from you, am I... <coughs> if somebody take something and then you offer them your shirt also okay or they take what is yours and you don't demand it back it goes right back up to the love part okay and how what am I depending on if you come to me and you go hey I want your shirt if I take my shirt off and give it to you I'm not going to do that here. I'm going to take my shirt off and give it to you. Okay? What I'm doing is, one, is I'm acting in love. And two is, is that I'm relying on the Father. I'm relying on Jesus and the Holy Spirit as my supply. Mm -hmm. That's why he says, somebody give some, don't, don't take it back. Why? Because they're not the supply. Jesus is the supply. The Holy Spirit is the supply. I can give something if 
um, if, if we're in that mode of, I can give this because I know that God's going to bless. If we give tithe, and when we give a tithe, or we sow, sow seed, or give alms, or any of those, we're giving those, are we expecting anything back? I sure hope so. <laughs> I sure hope that if you're giving tithe, you're not expecting the person that you're giving it to to give it back to you. Who are you expecting to give it back to you? A hundredfold. Mm -hmm. The Lord. Mm -hmm. If I'm sowing my time into Tawana and I'm saying, hey, I'm going to come help you with something. Am I expecting her to come back to my house to help me do something? Or am I doing it because I'm doing it out of love and I'm doing it because I know God is going to multiply the time that I'm taking to give to her and multiply it back to me. See what I'm saying? And so I'm just kind of putting some little examples in there as we're going through there to kind of see what Jesus is actually, you know, saying in this. You know what I'm saying? It's keep in mind as we're going through this, love. Love and who are we dependent on? Love and who are we dependent on when we're doing stuff? Who wants to read 31 through 33? Of uh, the same chapter. Okay. Real loud for everybody. And as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. Wow. <laughs> so in that, back to, if I do, if I love others, who love me, that's easy. Okay? It's easy for me to love somebody. Junior comes up to me and goes, hey man, dad, I love you. I'm like, oh, come on. You know? It's easy for me to love him back because he's loving me. Well, sometimes it's easy. No. <laughs> <laughs> but how much more, okay, going back to love, how much more is it for me to love those who are mistreating me? Not treating me well. Angry with me about something. You know? Hate me. And Jesus is saying here, when is it proper you to love that one that's loving you back? No, it's in loving that one that doesn't love you back. That's where it's really that's where you're, what we call growing <laughs> from faith to faith, from love, growing inside of you by loving those that don't love you back. It takes something, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. It takes something on the inside more than just you to love those that don't love you. Mm -hmm. It takes more of what? What's been deposited inside of you already, that fruit of the Spirit, that love that's in there, takes more of that manifesting itself when it comes to loving somebody who's spitting in your face. Mm -hmm. Or let's just take Jesus, for example. Somebody who's beating you, putting a crown on your head, making you walk with a cross, and then nailing you to it. Mm -hmm. And then in that moment, he was still loving them. It's outside of what we can do in ourselves. We can't do that in ourselves. What I mean by the flesh, by our own efforts. Can't do it that way. There's no way you're going to love somebody like Jesus did when they did all that to him and you just say, oh yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just going to love him in my own effort. It's out of the spirit. It's out of that love that's in your fruit. That fruit that's in there of being able to love them when they're doing that to you. Who wants to read verse? We're on 35, right? 34. 34, 34 to 36. Who wants to read that? I can read it. All right, shoot. Is, and if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? 
for even sinners lend to sinners and receive as much back. But love your enemies, do good, and lend, hoping for nothing in return. And your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Therefore, be merciful, just as your Father also is merciful. So if you lend, and the Amplified says money, if you lend money to those and expect to receive it back. Junior can tell you this, because it's, it's one of the things I've taught my kids along the way. It's a lesson I learned a while back. Is that if you're going to lend something, I don't care if it's money or objects. If you're going to lend something, and the person that you lend it to doesn't give it back. Can you still walk in love with them? If you can't, don't give it. Hmm. Remember me talking about that before? If you can't give it and know that if they don't give it back, that it will dis that it will mess the relationship up, then don't give it. Now, am I saying not to give? No. <laughs> I am, but I'm not. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is I'm trying to push you into and encourage you into what he's saying here. And it's what he's actually saying, you know, is that if you lend from those whom you expect it back, what credit is that to you? In other words, he's challenging you in that. Because even sinners can do that. But, verse 35, but love, that's unselfish, your enemies and do good and lend and expect nothing in return. That's what he's trying to encourage you to get to. I'm not saying don't. I'm telling you don't if you're going to mess the relationship up. Don't if you're going to get bitter about it. Don't if you are not ready to do what he's saying here. But love your enemies do good, lend, and expect nothing back. Why? Because your reward will be great, rich, abundant. Once again, we grow into things. We don't all start up here. It's starting there. So let's just say you have a problem doing that. Actually, you know what? I'll give you an example of one time. Something that happened to me. So... There was a time when the Lord was teaching me these things, you know, training that we talk about, the fun part, okay? I had bought a motorcycle from this guy, paid him cash for it, and I came back two days later to pick it up because I couldn't pick it up at the time. A friend of mine co-worker. When I came back two days later, he had moved from his home and quit the job, kept the motorcycle, kept the money. <laughs> I remember, and this was years ago, this is probably, probably, I don't know, 2000, no, yeah, probably around 2006. Seven. I remember in the moment <laughs> wanting to get mad because paid cash for a motorcycle I don't own anymore. And I remember going, and the Holy Spirit was just going, and He was reminding me of these scriptures. You know, if you're going to give something, don't expect it back. Now, <laughs> This was supposed to be a fair trade, but it didn't end up that way. And I literally, in that moment, had to forgive that man, and I had to put my trust in the Lord in this situation. Now, I didn't know if I was going to see this guy again. Whether or not I saw the guy again or not, I have to deal with what's going on in here and deal with it, regardless of whether I see him again. I have to resolve it in here. And so... 
I said, I'm going to forgive this guy. And I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to let it bother me. I've had many opportunities like that. Where I have given people money. They said they're going to pay me back. And they don't. But here's the thing. Before I gave it to them. Before I gave them large amounts of money. To help out. There was a guy one time. Him and his wife. Kids were going to be on the street. If he didn't pay his rent. And I paid the rent. Okay. I got 25 bucks back. Maybe 50. But I never. And I told him all that. Before I did it. I said am I willing to give this. And if he doesn't pay me back. Am I, am I, am I good. Because. It's the relationship. Okay. It was a worker of mine. I gave it. And I didn't expect anything back. And every time I saw him, at first he came back pretty regularly. You know, he goes, I'm going to pay you the money. And I'm like, hey, no problem. If you got it, you got it. You know, pay me back when you get the checks. No problem. Here, I was good. On his part, he got less and less business. Why? Because of the conviction on his heart about him not paying it back. Until we didn't even, he, I didn't even see him anymore. I think he quit and went somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? But I can't do anything about that part. Okay? The only thing I can do anything about is this part over here. Me. So when we lend, <coughs> when we give, no matter if it's money or whatever, because I've had the objects that have been taken, that nobody gave back, I've had all kinds of stuff. I've had plenty of opportunities to practice this thing. Y'all remember the flashlight, right? <laughs> I talked about the flashlight? Yeah. Gave that away. Struggled with that a little bit, but I got there. You know what I'm saying? But I say we might not struggle a little bit. Flesh has to die in all this. When you, when you love somebody and you're doing something for somebody, flesh has to die. That's the part that hurts. But if we do, we continue to grow. We continue to grow in love. That fruit that's in there doesn't stay seed. It begins to grow. But it happens as we practice and we do. That's why the title is being a doer of love. I'm not telling you to love people. I'm telling you to be a doer of loving people. That's what we're talking about. And so, everybody good? You still with me? Mm -hmm. All right. Who wants to read? Actually, before I jump down there, there's a couple of points over there. I just wanted to add in, when he's talking about, in the latter part of those scriptures, about being kind and gracious, even to the ungrateful, and the wicked, he says, be merciful. And the point I want to bring out is, merciful in the Amplified says, compassionate, compassionate and tender. Just as your heavenly Father is merciful. What's he talking about being compassionate and tender about? Those who don't love you. Those that are ungrateful. Those that are wicked. Be compassionate and be tender. But notice a little pulling today. All right, hang with me. I know this is like, we're all thinking about, oh my gosh, I got to do this, I got to do that. Oh man, you know. I know the Lord dealing with hearts. Trust me, dealing with mine when I was preparing it, okay? <laughs> but it's to encourage us. It's not to condemn us. It's to encourage us to practice this, okay? Who wants to read 37 through 38? Somebody hadn't read it yet. Who wants to read 37 through 38? I can. Okay. Oh, okay. Go ahead. I got some more. I got All some right. more scriptures. So. <laughs> I can tell you next. Sure. You don't have to fight over this. Yep. Okay. Do not judge others. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, 
shall men give into your bosom, for with the same measure that ye meet withal, it shall be measured to you again. Yes. So, in the first part of that, it says, do not judge. In the Amplified, it says, judging others through self-righteousness. Hmm. So, for a long time, I thought, do not judge. I can't judge anything. That's not what it's saying. It's saying, when I judge, to not judge through self-righteousness. And if I do that, then I will not be judged. That's what it's saying. It's not saying don't judge because you'll be judged. It's saying don't judge with self-righteousness, with a self-centeredness when you're doing the judging. And if you do that, then you won't be judged. And you won't be condemned. Then the next one is forgive. So one is do not judge. The other one is forgive. Well, I thought I already was forgiven. Yes, you are. <laughs> Let's dig into that a little bit more. Forgive. Forgive others who repent and change. Forgive those. And you will be forgiven. So, what does it mean in that? Let's think about it a second. Forgive. So that I can be forgiven. Jesus paid for my sins. That means I'm already forgiven. But what's it talking about here? Forgive, and you'll be forgiven. So there's laws to the kingdom, right? Everybody knows there's laws in the kingdom. Okay? So, if Samuel comes up to me and does something to me, and I don't forgive him, okay, whether he's right or wrong, it doesn't matter. I don't forgive him. What happens inside of me? Now, I'm already forgiven in Christ. I'm not talking about that part. I'm already forgiven in Christ. Christ's already forgiven me. So we're not talking about that kind of forgiving. What happens in me if I don't forgive? Bitterness starts to rise up. Resentment. What am I doing? I'm destroying the relationship. Same as a brother in Christ. So what am I doing in the body? Is I'm putting a wedge. I'm letting Satan get in and put a wedge in between us and one part of the body. But if I forgive him, I'm forgiven. What am I forgiving of? I'm forgiven in the aspect of my heart remains pure in that situation. Because Jesus is already forgiven you. If I don't, if I hold a grudge against him to the day I die, I'm going to go to heaven. God's not going to say, you know what, I'm going to send you to heaven. You didn't forgive the same. He's not going to say that because he's already forgiven me of everything. He's forgiven me of everything. The unforgiveness is what takes place on the inside. That's why when he says, then you're forgiven, he, what he's basically saying is, you don't have to deal with all that resentment, unforgiveness, and bitterness, and everything else that's going on inside of you, because what's it going to do? It's going to taint the way you see everything. The way I look at stuff like bitterness, unforgiveness, and all that stuff, is like, is, it, is there anybody in here not ever put on a pair of sunglasses? Okay. If I walk outside right now, nice sunny day out there and I look I can see everything in its purest color okay I can see everything exactly the way it was created but the minute I put sunglasses on it now changes the way everything looks it's tainted that's what bitterness does unforgiveness those things so in my relationship with Samuel, we were talking about that. My relationship with Samuel, even though we show up to church every week, we're together, we're doing stuff together, what happens in my heart is it's just like putting on sunglasses. It begins to taint the way I see him. And then therefore, what happens? 
my actions move and my the way I receive from him is now being tainted by that perception. How many of you have ever known anybody that's been bitter? <laughs> or have been in unforgiveness? Or had anything similar to that? And they would talk about something and you're just sitting there and you're going, what? You know what I'm saying? You're sitting there scratching your head going, what? How do you see that? Sunglasses. Hmm. It's the sunglasses. They're looking through a tainted world because it's what's coming up out of here. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why they can look at it that way. Look at, look at sinners all the time. You're, we're around them all the time. And they're saying stuff and you're just like, what? What are they doing? They're looking through... They're, looking through a lens that's been, that's been tainted, okay? Because they haven't received the Lord yet. We're looking through a different lens than you're looking through it. And that's what bitterness and unforgiveness and these things are. I don't want to keep going on it because I know you got the idea of what I'm talking about, but meditate on that because really, when it comes to guarding your own heart, that's what you're trying to guard it against. You're trying to guard it against an obscured view of truth. And that's what we're after. All right. Praise the Lord. I know it's a little tough today, okay? But that's okay. It's for our good. We chew on it. We digest it. We walk in it. And we guess what? We're glorified in Him, okay? Hang with me. So when it gets down to the bottom part of that, He shall might give, and it shall be given, given unto you, and uh, in the Amplified, it says, it, they, 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 they give it, and it shall be given unto you. They will pour into your lap a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over with no space left for more. I love that part. In other words, it's giving back to you so much, there's no space left for more to come in. Okay? For with, now, here's the catcher. <laughs> here's the catcher. For with the standard of measurement you use, mm. when you do good to others, do good to others, it will be measured back to you. If you are looking for laws that work in the kingdom, there is one for you. Okay? That is a kingdom principle, a kingdom law. What do I mean by that? It's like gravity. Throw something up in there, what does it do? It comes down. I don't care if a center throws it up or I throw it up. That rock goes up, it comes back down. Why? It's a law. Here's another law. So as you're doing unto others, it will come back to you the same way. Makes me want to walk in love a whole lot more because I want to get that fruit back. I want to get that back to me, right? Yeah. Amen. But if I'm doing something because I'm just doing it out of obligation or I'm just doing it for the wrong reasons while I'm doing it to others, that's the way it comes back to me. Gets a lot into the seeds that we're sowing, right? The seeds that we're putting in the ground. Another kingdom principle. Remember when we talked about that. The seeds that we plant in the ground. Those seeds are not just actions. Those seeds are in your finances. Those seeds are in your actions. The seeds are in your speech. And what you do every day. But with those seeds, the measure in which I do it come back. That's Think on that. Because when I'm 
doing something. Why am I doing it? What's the motivation of my heart? Why am I doing it? Because if I'm doing it for the wrong reasons, I'm sowing the wrong seed. Now I'm saying that so that it goes back to what I say many times about guarding your heart. With all diligence, that's what the scripture says. Why? Because of the principles that are in the kingdom. That's why the word says, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life. In other words, what's coming out is what's producing fruit in my life. It's producing seeds. You know, I keep watering it, it produces fruit. Good or bad. Right or wrong. That's what Jesus is trying to tell him in this parable. That's what he's trying to get across to us today, including me, preaching to the choir, okay? We all need to guard what we're doing, guard the things that we're doing, guard what we're saying, guard what we're doing to people, you know what I'm saying? Guard our actions when it comes to what we're doing. Why? Because with the measure that we sow it, it's the measure that it comes back. So if I joyfully am helping to one up, then what am I expecting back? Somebody to joyfully so back in to my life. So that's what he's trying to say in this. Be careful. Be careful what it is that we're sowing. And we do it all the time. When you speak over yourself, you're sowing seeds. Good or bad? They're all seeds. Actions. Intents of the heart. All these things are seeds being sown. So. All right. Now that y'all are excited, let's move on to the next one. <laughs> Who wants to read... Um, <coughs> verse 46 and 47, surely. I know you were fighting with uh, <coughs> earlier about trying to read. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> That's 46 and 47. 46 and 47. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things which I say? Whoever comes to me and hears my saying, does them, I will show you whom he is like. Exactly. So, <clears throat> whoever, or why do you call me Lord, Lord? And then the Amplified, it says, do not practice what I tell you. Do not practice what I tell you. So there's a practice to it. Not hearing not hearing only it's not I spent time and I had a good Bible study this morning it's not oh I spent an hour of praise and worship it was really good I'm not saying don't do those <laughs> what Jesus is saying here is don't call me Lord Lord don't call me Lord not Savior because he's your Savior don't call me Lord of your life and not practice what I'm showing you. Don't say, oh Lord, you're Lord of my life. No, I'm not going to do anything. What he's saying is, call me Lord by practicing these things that we're talking about. Once again, this is not condemnation. This is exhortation. Okay? This is exhort. I'm exhorting you to practice what it is. Well, I didn't do a good job this week. Who cares? That week's gone. Amen. It don't matter what happened before you even showed up here today. It doesn't even matter what you did five minutes ago. None of that matters. What matters is what you do from here forward. 
So I'm exhorting you to love and good works. I'm exhorting you to take what's being said today and go, help me hold the spirit to understand that to a greater degree and now provide opportunities for me to grow in it. Oh, don't worry, that'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As soon as I said that, I was like, don't worry, it'll be there. Uh-huh. Opportunities will be there. Okay? So, everyone who comes to me and listens to my word and obeys them. That's what he said. That's what the practice in it. Everybody that comes to me, hears the word, and goes and be, be a door. That's what he wants you to do, practice it. <clears throat> and then he says, I will show you whom he is like. Now, for time's sake, I'm going to run down the trees. There's something I want to get to here towards the end. And I want to close this up so we can do communion. So, in the rest of that, he says, and I'm reading from the Amplified. So it's going to add some words in. Not too many, but it's going to add a couple of words in. It says, he is like a far-sighted, practical, and sensible man. Who bit? Why is that? Because he's thinking about the words he's going to say. He's thinking about the seed he's going to sow. He's thinking about the actions that he's doing. That's why it says so. that. He's like a man that builds his house when he had du- when he digs and he lays the foundation on the rock. We all know what the rock is, right? That's Jesus. So when he builds his house on Jesus, when the floods come and it, and it burst against the uh, house and yet could not shake it because he had been securely because it had been securely built which is the practicing securely built and founded on the rock Jesus Christ but the one who heard and has not practiced what I say is like a foolish man who built his house on the ground without any foundation and when the winds burst against it, it immediately collapsed and the ruin of the house was great because of the impact of that crash. We must be a doer of the word to build our foundation. We always say hearing and studying the word but not, it's not only that that changes you. It's also building that foundation, which is being a doer of the word, which is practicing it, which is cultivating it in your life. How do we practice love? Love is a fruit. It's cultivated by practicing it. It grows. It's matured by practicing it. When I have an opportunity to walk in love, I must choose to walk in love. I have to choose to walk in love. Love is not a feeling. Love is not a feeling. Amen. It is an action. It's a choice. It's a choice that requires an action. Okay? Love is activated by faith. Faith is an action you choose to do or not. And it's based on relationship. Why is that? All right. We were talking about this earlier. Remember I was talking about it earlier with Michaela. And I said, I'm gonna start, I said, I'm getting into my message already. So we were talking in the kitchen, which is why we didn't get to prayer time. And uh, we were talking in the kitchen and uh, we're out here somewhere. And here's the thing. Here's how you practice, okay? So remember when I talked about, doesn't do me any good to you walk in love and I'll give you some examples, okay? One of the other ones was about the guy that took my money and took my motorcycle boat, okay? Here's a different one, okay? So love is a fruit. It's in your spirit, okay? But you have to choose to operate in it by faith. So if Michaela came up to me and she did something, or she's just being ugly at the moment, let's just say that, okay? And then the Holy Spirit speaks to me and goes, I just want you to love on her right now. 
But Lord, she just got through cussing me out and uh, spitting on me. What do, you, what do you mean you want me to love on her? How about a, how about a, I, I know I'm not the only one that thinks that way sometimes. Okay, come on. You, you know. But the Holy Spirit on the inside is going, I want you to love. What has to happen? It has to be an action, right? A faith action. Okay? So then I have to go and move toward that. Okay? But as I'm moving toward that, and then I go, Michaela, I love you so much. You're such a great woman of God. What am I doing? I'm acting in faith, right? But what happens? That fruit on the inside, by faith, begins to manifest. Isn't that the way healing manifests? Comes out of my spirit, man. And then all of a sudden, everything starts to change. Even me. Because then love starts to flow out of me, where there was no love flowing out at the moment. And the last part of that I talked about relationship, okay? It's the, <clears throat> the opportunity, faith, based on the action that you choose to do, and it's based on relationship. Why did I say that? Because the more that I spend time with Jesus, and the more I begin to trust him, then the more that this becomes available for me to step out. Because I'm putting my trust in him, not in me. So when I step out toward Michaela and I say, Man, God loves you. You're such a wonderful woman of God. What am I doing? I'm dying to flesh. I'm letting the spirit flow. I'm acting in faith. Love is beginning to flow out of me. And I'm doing it because I know who Jesus is. In me because I know that he first loved me when there was nothing to be loved he loved me when I was a sinner and when I wasn't doing anything right he loved me I can't love without him <laughs> it's not me loving it's the fruit that he put on the inside of me but I choose whether or not to let it out I choose whether or not to love somebody in the face of them not being the best person in the world. Hmm. But it's a choice. It's an action based on relationship. And faith is what activates it. I'm not saying faith in love, faith in Jesus faith in what he put on the inside of me and faith that when I step out it's going to happen how do we do healing we talk about it all the time if I'm saying that if I'm saying I'm not seeing here but let's just say I was if I'm sitting here and my knees hurting and I go and Holy Spirit says you believe I healed you yeah all right we get up and walk it's the same thing <laughs> it's the same thing I'm talking about with love what does it what does it require Relationship. Oh, Holy Spirit is telling me to get up and walk. Oh, I believe what you're telling me. Okay, just like I believe you want me to love this person and act. Faith goes, all right, that requires an action. So if I'm, hey, Michaela, same thing in healing. Hey, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to start walking. Healing manifests, love manifests. Same way. The kingdom operates the same way on these things. Where does healing come from, my spirit man? Amen. Where does love come from, my spirit man? Both require faith, action, and they're based on my relationship. My understanding of who Jesus is in that moment. The more I understand about healing, the easier it is for me to get up and walk in faith because I'm like, it worked the other 2,000 times I did it. So I'm getting up this time based on the relationship from 2,000 times I did it. But guess what? I had to start the first time. The second time. The third time. The fourth time. 
Why do we practice? We practice so that practicing gets us to understand the faithfulness of God in what I'm doing. The practice is not for me or for him. It's for me. So I can understand his faithfulness. So I can understand how he works. Every situation that I want in healing, they're not the same. They all took different stuff. Every time I walk in love, it's not going to be the same. It's going to take different actions, different motives, different things that I'm doing. One is, hey, the other one is, I go buy them something and give it to them. I don't want to buy anything about that person. I don't even like that person. In my flesh. But if the Holy Spirit saying, go buy that person a gift and give it to them, guess what? The only way I'm going to grow is to go buy some and give it to them. Because why? Because that's what the Holy Spirit wants me to do right now. Oh, I don't want to buy them anything. I'm just going to go up and shake their hand. Not the same thing. Jesus on the porch when he went to the, the pool of Bethesda, he didn't minister to all of them, he ministered to one. Why? Because that's who the Holy Spirit said to go to. If he'd walked over and that guy's laying on, on his mat and he goes, I don't want to pray for him. Uh, that guy's missing an arm. Let me pray for that one. Would have been the wrong one. He's telling you go buy some. Go buy it and give it. And with the same measure that you give, it comes back. So as you're going to get it, do it in love. Yeah. The Lord told me to give you this. That's all. The Lord told me to give it to you. I just want to say, you know, thanks for whatever. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just bless you and I love you. They could be spitting on the back of your head while you're walking away. Is it going to change anything? Could. You have a choice at the moment. <laughs> Here you go. I love you. You turn around and spit on the back of your head as you're walking away. You're going to be like. Phew. I'm just being real. I just want to be real. In that moment, I'd be like. Phew. Probably. You know. Don't know. I have to wait for that moment. And then I'll deal with it in the moment. <laughs> you know? But I can tell you this much, is if my heart was truly in love when I gave it, I guarantee you the spitting on the back of the head won't bother me as much. But if I gave it because I was just being obedient, I'm just like, okay, Lord, you're dragging me through this. That spitting on the back of the head probably, probably might clench my fist for a second. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> But what's the motives? It goes back to motives. What are my motives when I'm doing it? What if they spit on me when I give it to them? Doesn't matter. It's not about their reaction. You're not after their reaction. You're not after their response. You're after obedience and walking it out in love. That's what you're after. Why? Because I know the fruit is coming back off of it. I know the harvest is coming back. Whether they do anything, good or bad, they're not responsible for bringing you the harvest. Amen. God is. If it ain't through them, it'll be through somebody else. Why? Because that's the loving God we have. You're not doing something because you're trying to get that person won over. You're doing it because you're guarding what's going on in here and you're being obedient to the Spirit. And you're learning to grow. That's what it's about. Not about the other person. Where the other person spits on you, doesn't do anything, or even hugs your neck. That's not what you're doing it for. It's judging these things in here. What's going on in my heart today? I mean, I feel it. I don't know if the rest of y'all are feeling it, but I'm feeling it. I got all kinds of things going on here. I'm ministering to what the Holy Spirit is telling me, but I got all kinds of stuff going on the inside. You know what I'm saying? Because why? I need work. We're all working to what? To be more like Him. You know? If you know Jesus' love for you and His faithfulness, then you will act accordingly. 
If you know his love and his faithfulness, then it inspires you to do it more because you know that. So today we talked about, and we kind of rehearsed a little bit about walking in love. What is it? What is that? Loving your enemies. Doing good to those, good to those that hate you and mistreat you. Loving those who don't love you. Lending and not expecting it back. Judging and condemning others. How do we do that? Or not do that? The standard of measure from which you sow. Love is a fruit of the Spirit and it must be cultivated. It must be practiced. When I hear the word practice, I'm like, oh man, more flesh is dying. But that's okay. Because it's not about me. I'm not living to try to get the flesh to dominate. What am I doing? I'm living to try to get the flesh to die so I can be more like him. And in that is practice. 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 Over and over and over and over and over. So. Now this week, here's your homework. Whether you want it or not, it's coming. Okay? So, but I'm being polite and saying this is your homework. Okay? This is your homework for the week. For the kingdom, by putting into practice the things that we just received. An opportunity will arise for you to be a doer of the word and practice it. Homework this week, whether you want it or not, is coming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just giving you a heads up that it's coming. But you'll have an opportunity this week to walk in what we're talking about. Why? Because you can think back for the past seven days, you can think of plenty of opportunities you have an opportunity to walk in and already. So, this week, you have an opportunity. Guess who's responsible for that opportunity? Not me. <laughs> I'm responsible for this man right here. But you're responsible. So, take the message today. Go back and read through Matthew, or Luke 6. Go back and read through it this week. Go back and meditate on it. Because honestly, I didn't pick that message out for today. The Holy Spirit did. So obviously he's wanting us to, I had a whole other message for it. This is what he wanted. You're not here by accident. You didn't hear the message by accident. Those online that are hearing it, they're not going to be hearing it by accident. Okay? It's an opportunity for us to grow closer to him. An opportunity to dig into love and make it, and let it manifest in our lives. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Once again, it was an exhortation today. Exhortation to love and good deeds. Okay? That's what it was. Not condemnation. I don't feel condemned. I just know I got things to work on. Because I know I'm not perfect yet. I'm on the way. You know what I'm saying? Take it the same way. Don't get under condemnation about it. Just say, man, Holy Spirit. Ooh, we gotta get to work. <clears throat> and then just walk it out day by day. You have opportunities, okay? All right.